Hey, welcome back. We're going to finish lesson three today. So we need to go to page 31, which looks just like this right here. We're doing activity two. In this activity, we're going to write functions to represent patterns in a sequence. We're going to look for patterns. That's a big topic in topic one. Patterns. A ceramic tile company creates a new line of decorative kitchen and bathroom tiles. The company sells designs it creates from combinations of small green and white square tiles. And here is the design that you can see in your book. We have some green and whites. The first question here, we want you to pause the video and go ahead and describe all of the various patterns you notice. So if we were to extend this pattern out from one to two, from two to three, and from three to, you know, four, we're going to keep going. What patterns do you see? Go ahead, pause the video and write down any patterns you might see here. Okay. So hopefully you pause the video. Did you get the patterns that I got? The answer is probably no. I mean, because everybody's going to see something a little differently. But here are the patterns that I got right here. The first one, the center green square. I looked at that and I saw three. And then this is five. So this is three by three. This is what? Five by five. Seven by seven. Okay, is that seven? Three and then three more than one. Yep. Okay, so the center green square has odd dimensions. Three, five, seven. Those are all odd. So that's a pattern that I noticed. I noticed more patterns. I looked at the corner squares. This one's one by one. This one's two by two, three by three. So the corner square is increased by one square each time. That's another pattern that I noticed. And then I noticed these white rectangles here. Did you notice that they are the same length as the center square? And at the same time, the width of these corner squares. So I kind of wrote that out. The white rectangles are the width of the corner squares and the length of the middle squares. Those are some patterns that I noticed. And yours might be a little different. doesn't mean they're wrong. So go ahead and leave them. But let's actually put some numbers to this. Okay. Let's complete the table for the first four designs. All right. So how are we going to do this? I put the little picture here so we can see it. Let's see. I'll do the first one. What I want you to do is go through and let's just fill this table out. What do we got? Design number one. It says the number of white tiles. Now we're going to use function notation. So if you notice right here, it says W of N. So that is function notation. It's telling us we're going to plug an N in. So that tells us the design number. And then we will tell you the number of white tiles. In the first design, I noticed there are three times four, right? So there are 12 white tiles. Okay. You can just count them up and put them in the little table. The number of green tiles, okay, well we have three by three, so that's nine in the middle, plus four, that's 13. Okay, and then the, to the total number of tiles, I can get that by going the dimensions here across, it's five by five, that's 25. Okay, or another way to get that is to just add these two numbers, right, because it's only white and green, so we can add them together and get the total number of tiles. Okay, let's go through. I want you to pause the video right now and complete through number four in this table. So do uh, column two, three, and four. Right now, pause the video and figure out two, three, and four. Okay, how do we do here? Hopefully you're able to fill in that table, but it is tricky. It's not easy. Let's check it out. I have some numbers here. I did the first design, I did the second design, right? And I want to find a pattern here. How am I going to get the third design, the fourth? Let's just look at the green tiles first. I like the green tiles, easy, G of N. So notice they're using what's called function notation. The G obviously tells us we're going to get the, the green, the number of green tiles and N stands for the design number. So when I plug a one in, I should get a 13. We're looking for a function here because you know what? We have to go out to seven. We have to go out to 10. And then further, we can't count these forever. I mean, that's what little kids would do, right? Just count it using your fingers. And I don't have that many fingers. So we have to figure out what the equation is so that we can work it out that way. So looking for patterns, here's what I noticed. I'm going to write down, we're going to do green first. I like green. And I'm, we're going to start with the first design. I noticed that the first design, if I count the green, if you notice when I started filling this table up and I counted it, I said it's three times three. And then there were four extra. Right, so three times three plus four. So I'm gonna write that down, three times three. I'm just gonna write that as three squared, 
right? So the first design has three times three, that's three squared, and then plus four, okay? And that's how I can get the total that I got over here, which is 13. It's just nine plus four, which is 13. Easy peasy. So now I go to the next design and I'm looking for a pattern. This whole section is about finding a pattern. From three, it goes up to five. So I have this center part, which is five times five. So I'm gonna write that as five squared. And then I need to add these corner pieces, which is four. We have four of these corner pieces. And this is two times two, these, in design number two, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, moi. So that is two squared, so it's four times two squared. These are the four corner pieces, and this is the piece in the middle. Design three, seven squared, plus, and then I have these four corners, and this corner piece right here is three times three, and I have four of them again, so it's times four, I'm sorry, plus four times three squared. So seven squared plus four times three squared. What do you think design four would be? Let's look at our pattern. Again, we're all about patterns. So three, five, seven, I bet the next one's nine, right? So it's gonna be nine squared, plus four times, we have two, three, I bet it's gonna be four by four. So some students will ask, what about this first one here? It looks a little different than these. Well, actually it does look different, but it's the same, right? Because that first design had three by three, and then there were four one by one squares. So I can just write that down, it's four times one squared. And here we go, this is basically, you see we got a pattern going here. This was the first design. This was the second, third, fourth. Okay, eventually you wanna figure out any number of these. And in a perfect world, I could give you say seven and you could just figure it out. And I think we have most of uh, this green part figured out right, except maybe this first number is a little tricky, but look, the four always stays the same. And then the corner number is always whatever the design number is squared. So for the first design, it's one by one. For the second design, it's two by two. And then it's three by three. So that's easy. So if I ask you to do number seven, then I know that I can figure out most of these. This first one's a little tricky, but I, can, I know the rest of it will be four times seven squared, right? We just have to figure out what this would be. And we could count and figure it out because seven's not that far away. But it's better if we have a straight rule that'll get that to us. And here's where I'm gonna teach you a little trick. Yay! Even numbers. How do we get even numbers? Well, we can get a list of even numbers. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. You know those are even, right? Two, four, six. How do we get those? Well, we just multiply your regular counting numbers. We just double them, right? Because that's what even means. It means that you have a pair. There's always two. So if we take two times n, whatever n is, that's gonna give us two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, 14, 20, right? Those are all even. These are all odd. So how do I get the odd numbers? Well, odd's a little bit more tricky, but not too much. The odd numbers can come from taking the uh, design number here. We make it even first. So to make it even, it's 2n. But odd is always either one more or one less than an even number. So in this case, if I plug a one in, I get two times one, that's two. But I want a three, I can just do a plus one on it. If I take every even number and I add one, it's gonna make it an odd number. Let's check that out, two. What's two times two? Four, and then I add one, I get five. I get that number right there. What about three? I would get six plus one, which is seven. Four would give me eight plus one, which is nine. So it's not that difficult, but you have to know these tricks well, little tiny trick. And once you see it, then you know it, right? So the odd numbers are 2n plus 1. So if I wanted 7, I could plug in a 2 times 7, which is 14, plus 1. That'll be 15. So that would be 15 squared plus 4 times 7 squared. See how we're getting these patterns. Let's do 10. Pause the video and figure out what 10 would be for the green number of squares. Pause the, come on now, pause that video and do the design number for 10. Because when I did it, I got 841, right? So how would I get that? Well, it'd be 10, two times 10 plus one, that is 21 squared 
plus four times, and remember this number comes from right there, so it would be 10 squared. All right, we can plug that on the calculator. How would we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's our calculator. We can just type it in, 841. Oh, that is fantastic. Let's do row seven here, we'll type it in. So 15, and the squared button is right here, and we add plus, and then four, and you can use parentheses if you want. I use parentheses this time, and we can figure out the rest of the green. So I think we have our, our uh, pattern here for the greens. Let's come up with an expression that we can use for any number of greens, and we kind of did that. Uh oh, don't be moving around here. Suppose we put an N here. So down here, instead of a number, I put an N. How would we get the rest of these numbers? And we've done it with 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 10. What would the nth number be? How do we get this number? We doubled n. And then we added 1. Right? That's how we got this number right here. And then we squared it. Whatever that was, we squared it. We add it to 4 times whatever this row number was. So in this case, it will be n squared. So this, will, this is called the general expression. Okay, we can find the nth term, we say. It sounds weird, but we find the nth term. And that means that with this little equation, if I want to find row 19, I plug a 19 in, boom, I got the number of green tiles. If I want to you know, find row 33, I can plug it in. So let's write this down as, I'm not going to simplify, but it can be simplified. 2n plus 1 squared, and then we have plus 4n squared. We have the four corners and each one was the width of whatever design number we were on. So that is a good expression for the number of green tiles. Now, let's find an expression for the number of white tiles. Oh, goodness gracious, the number of white tiles. Well, here's what I noticed. When I started doing some counting, it was one less. So I counted, it was one less than the number of green, of course. That's why I did green first. So 13. The number of white tiles was 12. 41, the number of white tiles was 40. You can count it if you want to, but if for the uh, third, the number of green tiles is 85, the number of white tiles will be 84. So it's always one less. Well, I'm not gonna make this too difficult, but it's always one less. It always worked out that way. Again, we're looking for patterns, and that's an easy pattern, 840. Let's write that down. So how can I write a general expression? I don't even need to do all this work. It's one less. Did you guys hear me say it's one less? All right, so it's one less. 2n plus 1 squared plus 4n squared. Guess what's coming next? Minus 1. It's going to be one less. Okay? So that's pretty easy. And then I could add these two together and give me the total number of tiles. Now, there might be a better way to do this. Uh, I'm gonna, let's, let's do the better way to do it first. Because to add these two expressions together, whew, I want the total, no, total number of tiles. I can just add these. Did you notice that this number down here is just the sum of these two? So 40 plus 41 is 81. 84 plus 85, what does that give you? 169, boom. 289, 841. Would this be 1681? Let me write that down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is over here in my kind of uh, make up table, made up table here. Let me draw a line. Perfect. I'm going to do the total number of squares here. So the total number of tiles for row number one, design number one, the total number was 25. So I need to know how to go from one and then I get out of 25. All right, so let's keep looking here. Two gave me 81. Three is 169. Now, I'm starting to notice the patterns. 289. I'm not sure if you noticed this, but I did notice that 5 squared is 25. That's a perfect square. 81 is 9 squared. All right, so you should at least know those two. 169 is 13 squared. Okay, so then what is 289? 17 squared? Yeah. So look at how these are changing. Right? So 5, 9, 13, 17. What is the difference between these numbers here? We're starting at 1, 2, 3, 4. 
The total number of tiles is 5, 9, 13, 17 squared, right, for each one of these. Did you notice these are going up by 4s? So there's an element of 4 in here somewhere. If I multiply this number by 4, it's going to take me to the next row. But it might need to be adjusted a little bit. So what is 1 times 4? Uh, 1 times 4 is 4. But this is 5. So it's like 1 times 4 plus 1. 1 times 4 plus 1. Stay with me here. I'm going to do a couple. How do we get from 2 to 9? Well, i got to use that 4 because they're increasing by 4s. So if I go 2 times 4, that will give me 8. Right? But I need 9 squared. So I need to add 1. Guess what this is? 3 times 4. How do I get 13 squared? So it's 3 times 4. That's a 4 plus 1. That'll give me the 13. So if I take this number, whatever it is, and I multiply it by 4, and then I add 1. So let's do that. So the nth, the nth would be, take this number, multiply by 4, so I get 4n, and then add 1, and then I have to square it. 5 squared, 9 squared, 13 squared, 17 squared. That's how I get the total number of, uh, what do you got, tiles in our design here. Now the other option is you can just add these two big old ugly things together and put it all down here. And guess what? They're going to be equivalent. They're the same thing. What? That would be a big mess though. But you could add those two things together and put them right here. So we have completed this table and we've come up with an expression at the end. When we look at the next couple questions, what new patterns do you notice? When we filled out the table, okay, you can now answer that. Number four. How many total tiles are in design seven? We answered that. It tells you to explain your reasoning. These are going to be part of your practice questions, just so you know. Uh, hotel wants to order the largest design possible. All right, let's go back to our table and look. Okay, so the first design has 25 tiles. The second design has 81 tiles. They want the largest design possible. They can afford 1,700. Okay, so which design? You can answer that question now. And we completed, sometimes there's typos in this book. All right, this should be a six. I don't know what they're doing. Six. Um, complete by writing an expression. We did that already. So you should be able to fill in all those problems. We're going to check those problems before you take the mastery check. That brings us to number seven. Tanya and Alex came up with different expressions to represent the number of green tiles in each pattern. Yeah, I didn't really talk about this, but there's different ways to do this as well. Like when I saw this, I saw the middle piece in the four corners. But some people, when they look at it, they see the whole thing, and then you subtract the, the white part, right? And if you subtract the white part, you can come up with a different expression that's the same. So that's what number seven we're talking about. Two students, Tanya and Alex, came up with two different expressions to represent the number of green tiles in each pattern. Let's look at each of the expressions for Tanya and Alex. So Tanya has 4n squared plus 2n plus 1 quantity squared. And then Alex has 4n plus 1 squared. We started with that. Notice how he has subtraction. So Alex just saw it differently. And Tanya claims it's the same. Alex says one expression is different. Who is correct? All right. So what we're going to do to solve this is we're just going to do some simplification using algebra. Algebra 2, baby. We're going to figure this out. So let's do Tanya's first. It's 4n squared plus 2n plus 1 squared, essentially. So Tanya. Let's write out some Tanya. 4n squared plus 2n plus 1 squared, which means times itself, right? So that is the original expression. I'm going to multiply this part out first just to see what I get. Uh, the 4n squared doesn't change, right? But I'm going to add to it. Now we get 4n squared again when I do the first two terms. Then on the outside, I get a 2n plus a 2n on the inside plus a 1. And when I combine all these like terms, remember, we can combine like terms if they have the same exponent. So 4 plus 4, that's going to give us 8n squared. And then we have 2n and 2n is 4n and then plus 1. So this is Tanya's. I want you to figure out Alex's right now. Pause the video and figure out Alex's. See if they are equivalent expressions. Ready, set, go. Pause that video. Okay, that should be enough time. Done with that. Here we go. I did the first part because it's super easy. We just have to write it twice and then double distribute, right? So 
four n times four n and four n times one, so on and so forth. And then the second part, there's a subtraction. So I just wanted to do that with you. I didn't want you to mess that up. It's a negative 4n times 2n. That's negative 8n squared. And then a negative 4n times a positive one is a minus 4n. So now when I combine like terms, I have 16n squared minus 8n squared. That's just 8n squared. And then we can put, what do you got? 4n plus 4n minus 4n. So this will like cancel one of these, right? So I'm just left with a 4n. And then you got that lonely one. And if you look, these are equivalent expressions. I have figured out that they are. Who is correct? Tanya's correct. Of course, Tanya's correct. Okay, they're equivalent expressions. They just are in different form. So we have to be able to justify our reasoning using algebraic and graphical representations. And in this example, we used algebraic representations. We worked it out and simplified it using algebra, combining like terms. That's easy enough. In your textbook, they then talk about in the table, how they can simplify the two functions and come up with a total. Let's go back to that table real quick, that table. So if we were to simplify these, our expressions are a little bit different because we did it a different way. But if we were to simplify both of these, uh, we would get this expression if we worked it all out. You can take my word for it, but that's what we would have to do to prove it algebraically. So part eight here, number eight, it says, analyze the context table and expressions, identify the function family, Okay, so remember we're dealing with three basic families that we have to know. We have to know about linear expressions. That's one, so is it linear? Was our expression linear? I don't know. Was it quadratic? I don't know. Was it exponential? I don't know. Well, actually I do know. It was quadratic, right? Because the x was squared. Whenever you have an x squared, that's quadratic. Um, that would be explaining our reasoning and identify the family function that describes the pattern for the number of green tiles. Also, that was qu quadratic. When you add the functions together, is it part of the same function family? Okay, so we're just going to go back to this, which is the worked example. If we take the two expressions that they had, uh, let's see, this one is quadratic because we would have an n squared. And then we add to it another quadratic. What does it end up being a quadratic? So yes, two family of functions. When you add them together, you get the same family of functions. So that answers that one. So you should have, right now, go ahead and answer eight. Lastly, we're gonna go to page 35. Just go ahead and page 35. We're gonna talk some talk right now. Consider the equivalent expressions that we worked with. We're gonna say whether these are always, sometimes, or never. Two functions are blank equivalent when their algebraic representations are the same. So if we have two functions and we simplify both of them and they end up being the same, then we say they are always equivalent. Easy enough. Two functions are blank equivalent when they produce the same output for a specific input value. What we're really keying in on right here is if we have two functions and it says they produce the same output for a specific input value. So in other words, if x equals two, you get the same output but not necessarily for all of them. So that's not necessarily true, but it might be true, right? They might be the same, but not always. So we're gonna put sometimes for that one. Sometimes. And then lastly, two functions are blank equivalent when their graphical representations are the same. So if I were to graph both and the graphs were the same, then we would say they would always be equivalent. That's easy peasy. All right, so we're gonna give you your homework. And part of that homework is going back to the other lesson. It says determine whether each table of values is a function. Remember, we figured this out from the other lesson. If we were to graph it, it has to pass a vertical line test. So my recommendation when you do this part, make a little graph of it, see what the graph looks like. If it's a straight line, remember it's linear. These are the function families. Oh, we have three of them. So there are three function families. It's either gonna be linear, so you graph it and it forms a straight line, that is linear. Or the other option is it could be quadratic, right? We just kind of talked about that. Do you remember the rule for finding out quadratics? You can do the second differences in the table. We did that in the last lesson. So from zero to four, it's four. From four to 18, it's 14. Uh, what do we get from here? That is a lot, 22, okay. So then I find the next differences, that one's 10, and well, I'll let you do the rest of the problem. But the second family could be quadratic. Some of these are not even functions. If you graph this one, it's gonna look like this. Four, one, four, two, it's a straight up and down line. Remember, that doesn't pass the vertical line test because the vertical line would be on the line. 
That's all I'm going to say. We'll put your uh, we'll put your practice in Google Classroom. Good luck. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See you.